R.Z. Rogers was a train porter and fireman back in 1952. It was so inhumane. Now here we are, locomotive farmer, going to Fort Pierce on the same train. The brakeman, the flagman, everybody could go in that restaurant and the only way that we, and the best chill in the world was made right there in that little restaurant right across from the railroad truck. That woman could make that chill in. They had a little hole in the wall with all the garbage can and, and stuff, and that, that's right. And we could not go in and sit down and have a bowl of chili, a cup of coffee, and other guys in there just having a great time. You had to go in that and you couldn't do that when a lot of us refused to do it. My name is Annie B. Page. I was born and raised in Perrine, 1937. It's been uh, how many years? 84 86. years ago. No, you're 86. 86? Yes. You trying to be young, girl? You trying to go back in time? <laughs> yeah, I was. I was. <laughs> 86 years ago, I was born and raised in Paran. Okay. Where I'm living at now, I've been 55 years. My home sit. And that is, right, right now she lives in the back of what is now considered Cutler Bay, but to her is South Miami Heights. South Miami she Heights. directly two streets behind South Ridge. Right. Okay. I worked in the field, picking tomatoes, hoeing tomatoes. I did that for many years. Then I left and went to the packing house where they handled the tomatoes at. And I packed tomatoes, hope shipped them off to different states. I enjoyed that, I loved it. Because the owner, our boss man, as we would call him, was a friend to the family. And he was more like a relative than anything. And anytime we have an opening in his field, he would get some of us black people to uh, come in and do it, only the blacks. Mm -hmm. And we would go in and do it. It was about, the field was about, I said, must be about eight miles away from where I lived it. But they always had a truck. You know what a truck is? 
Mm -hmm. They always had a truck that that truck would come around and pick everybody up. You didn't have to worry about walking or anything. The truck would come and pick you up and take you to the sit where you were going to walk and where you're going to work at. And they would bring you back. I loved it. My father worked in the field. He was something like the boss man. My mama didn't work at all. My father was something like the boss man. He was our boss, you know. He tell us what to do. He go by and check it and see that we do it right. That's the, That's, yeah. That's the way we came up. But then when we got bigger and grown up, we start going to school. We went to school, but we went to school at a late age. But then during the summertime, we renewed our school day. Instead of us taking off for the summer, we will go to school and say we going to school. But we really needed to went to school during the summer. Well, it was because we've been at a later age because we was uh, working. When we were supposed to be in school, we was out uh, working. We had to work because our family was real poor. And we, in order to have food and stuff, we all just agreed to go to work. And we worked. And when school closed down, we would go to school and open the school up. And that's when we would do our lessons and everything. Like you break into the school? No. They had something they called the principal. They would come out to the school and open the schools up. Uh, and okay. Okay, um, my name is Talaya Hudson, um, Leia, and I was born and raised in Miami as well. Um, I was born in Baptist Hospital in Kendall, and I was raised in South Miami Heights for a good portion of my life, but all in all, I lived a around Miami a lot in different parts of Miami. Um, the first parts of my childhood, I lived in Liberty City for a while, um, and then we moved back to South Miami Heights. Um, I lived in Richmond Heights for a little bit. I also lived in Goose for a little bit. So I lived in a lot of those predominantly black neighborhoods in Miami growing up. Um, but the craziest part about it is I did not go to any predominantly black schools. Um, even though I lived in these predominantly black neighborhoods, I attended to magnet schools that were in predominantly white neighborhoods. Um, for elementary school, I went to Sunset Elementary. Um, in Coral Gables, a predominantly white school, a magnet program, an amazing school. Um, and then for middle school, I went to GW Carver Middle School in Coconut Grove. And then for high school, I went to um, Medical Academy for Science and Technology, Mass at Homestead, which was a brand new school, but at the time was also a predominantly Spanish school. So never predominantly black schools, but lived in predominantly black neighborhoods. Um, right. And then how far am I going now? No, you can keep going. Okay. Um, and then after high school, I graduated and went to an all girls college at the time when I applied, Mary Baldwin College, which is now co ed and a university. Um, and that is located in Stanton, Virginia, which is also a predominantly white institution. <laughs> 12 of us siblings. My mother had 12. Yeah, we all yeah, we, we got yeah. along great. We looked at each other. We taught each other different things. Three bedrooms. We used the front room as a bedroom because there were more of us had to have somewhere to sleep. And by being eight girls and four boys, the girls got none of the boys. So we had the bedrooms. The boys had had, had the uh other rooms. We had the four bedroom. The boys had the rest of the rooms. Mm -hmm. Also, the front room because it was more of us than it was them. 
everything together and we really enjoyed each other. Because my mom and daddy didn't buy us to argue, they didn't buy us to fight or anything. They was a big family of us. Also, my mother took on two more children of her grandchildren because their mother passed away. And we brought them into the family. And we all lived there just like sisters and brothers. Wasn't no niece and no nephew or nothing. It was sisters and brothers. But we knew we wasn't sisters and brothers. But that's the way we had to live. Mm. The favorite room? The dining room, where you eat at. <laughs> My mother cooked it. She cooked it on a wooden stove. It only burned wood. And she would make some of the best biscuits. You wouldn't believe it. The food that she cooked. She would fry chicken or cook beans or something like that. A big biscuit. And you would swear it come from a wholesale store. But that's just the way the stove cooked. Just yes, ate what you can. You ate what you get. Well, we can't see her. It's fine. No, because I had it laying on my chest. Ain't that something? <laughs> we should put the picture back on. Okay. All right, there it is. My mother cooked a lot of beans. We had beans. We love the beans. And we ate a lot of beans, like great northern beans, black eyed peas, llama beans. We ate like that. We ate heavy food. Filling food. We grow the beans. We grow the mostly all our beans. We grow cabbages, we turn up green, mustard green, okra, squash. Different things like that. We grow it ourselves. Yes, we did. We loved it because that's the vegetables and things. We had iron trees, lime trees, grapefruit trees. It was a wooden house with a big porch on to it. It, it had windows that you heist. Our windows were windows that you would heist up and put a stick up on it, and it would sit up. Mm -hmm. But other than that, everything was great. We loved it. The house was great. We didn't. Only thing was missing that we didn't have running water. We didn't have Lake Twisted. In. But anything else, you know, we had it. But mm -hmm. our food and thing, we were raising our food. We had food and stuff that we could go out in the yard and pick and come back inside, clean it up and make a meal out of it. And tomatoes, like tomatoes, you didn't have to worry about tomatoes. <laughs> Walk out the back to the field and pick yourself some tomatoes. Oranges, just go to the tree, pick your one, grapefruits, tangerines. Thing like that, we didn't have to worry about going to the store to buy it. We had it right there in the yard. Limes, lemons. We had all of it there. I loved it. We used to get in the road and play ball. We would get out in the yard and we would jump hopscotch. Y'all know what hopscotch is? Yeah, oh, I'm good at too. hopscotch. <laughs> mm -hmm. We would jump our hopscotch. We had, we just had a good time. Cause our family always stuck close together. Um, I grew up in multiple houses in my childhood. I lived with this grandma that's on the phone for a few years. Um, I lived with my other grandma in Richmond Heights for a few years. And then I moved back home with my mom for a few years. But uh, in every house, 
my favorite room was the dining room kitchen area. For some reason, that's just where the family congregates. Wherever there's food, that's where you would always find my family. Um, even if my mom just had food that she brought from outside, the whole house would be in her room with her and the food. That like wherever there was food, you would find my family. Um, yeah, the dining room, really. I lived in Richmond Heights across the street from Frank C. Martin, literally across the street. <laughs> <laughs> I wish the closets were bigger. Uh, growing up, it was four of us in our house, three girls and one boy. Um, and we lived in a three bedroom house for a good chunk of my childhood. Um, and my brother had his own room, but the three girls had to share a room. That was madness. <laughs> madness. Three girls sharing one closet. It was terrible. It was awful. I mean, like there was no way it was impossible to keep clothes out of that room. Like you had three people constantly. And then you had three children who were in school who were doing extracurricular activities. They were in sports. So we were constantly changing, constantly taking off clothes, putting on clothes. So just to have a bigger closet would have been the life. That's all I would have needed because the room was like, the size room was perfect. We had um, three beds in the room. We had two physical beds, but one of the beds had this funky thing that you can like pull the mattress from the yeah. room and it'll come up. So it'll turn from two twin size beds to like one California king bed and it'll completely cover our whole room. So we love that because we would have more people come over and have more cousins stay the night and it's already three of us in that room, but by Saturday night, it's six of us in that room, all laid across that California king size bed. Um, so the size of the room was fine with us. We didn't mind because, you know, you always had somebody next to you, always had a friend, somebody to talk to. But that closet? <laughs> <laughs> I could have lived with about two more of those. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, we did have the biggest bathroom in the house. You know, us girls, we had the you could say master bathroom. Our bathroom had a like a stand-up closet that was taller than me. It was basically like a walk-in closet in our bathroom where we were able to store a lot of those, you know, hair products that you talk about. And we had this room that you can set up a chair and have somebody do your hair in our bathroom, you know, in our right. house running brooks. That bathroom was humongous. It was fitting for us. But um, my grandma's house wherever you get in is where you fit in. We do our hair in the kitchen. We do our hair in the dining room. We do our hair in the living room. We do our hair on the back porch. We do our hair on the front porch. Everywhere in that house is where we do our hair. <laughs> no, but everywhere we have, we will be all satisfied with it. You can move around and do things that you wanted to do. We never were left out. We never wanted to do anything and didn't have the space to do it with. Everything was right there. It looked like everything was right at hand. Mm -hmm. it, it was almost equal right. It was all equal right because, see, we had little schools. We had, well, I said an elementary school. Everybody that went to elementary school went to junior high school at the same time. We didn't have no children or anything. Everybody got promoted. We call it promoted. Everybody get promoted. When school was out and it come time for you to go to just there from sixth grade to seventh grade, it was there for you and you could go. You didn't have to say, well, I'm not gonna go to, I'm not gonna be put in the seventh grade cause I'm behind. Everybody was up at the same level and everybody passed their grades at the same time. And we went from, what? Elementary school. We went from elementary school to junior, from junior high to senior. And we really had a good time. Did you have any white kids in your class, Grammy? For any of them. That's what I was saying. We didn't have to be separated. The black be separated from the white. The black and the whites. When we graduate, who gonna graduate from the sixth grade to the seventh grade? It's the black and the white. They didn't take the black and graduate them and take the white and graduate them. They graduated us together. 
It didn't take us no more than 10 minutes when we were walking. And we didn't have a bus. We didn't know what a bus was. We had to walk. We walked from our Moton School that was in Perrine. And we would walk all the way down to a maze that was in Goose. But it wasn't no long, long, long distance. If we had a time start to get to school, get from me from our moving to me by 8.30, we had time enough to make it by walking. From Piranha Goose? Plenty enough time and we did it. Grammy, are you talking about maze that's in goose? Yeah, maze that's in goose. Oh my goodness. <laughs> we, 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 we ain't had but we ain't had but three schools. And that was R.R. R. Moton, Mays, and Howard up there in Coconut Grove. The only school we had, we ain't had all these schools that got around here. Ain't know nothing about them. What's look today? <laughs> Oof, y'all would have to find a bus for me. <laughs> no, we were right on time. When they got ready to pronounce your name and you said present, you were present. Okay. For elementary school, I went to Sunset Elementary. Um, I caught the public bus system to Sunset. Actually, because I went to Sunset Elementary and I had to catch the bus to school to get to and from school, um, I was the only first grader in my class with a cell phone. Yes, I had to. I got a cell phone in the first grade because I went to school so far. Um, because you were so far away from home. Yes, because I was, and I think for elementary school we were. Were we still living in the city, Grandma? No. With your mama. Yes. No, y'all, y'all had to move down here. Well, yeah. Come here with me. I went but to. I you went for for a short while. That is true. We were only there for a little bit, but yeah. I um I caught the public bus to school for yeah. elementary school. I went to Sunset you Elementary. Had, you had to catch the metro bus to school because you had so far to go. I was yeah I was I went to school so far. Um, I re, I just remember being so young and having to be up before the sun come up because I had to leave for school so early to get yeah. there. Like, I would never forget that that was just so traumatizing. Like, this is not fair. Everybody else is just waking up when I get to school and I've been up since six o'clock in the morning because I had right. to be at the bus stop by 7.15 or the bus was going to leave me. That's why we put you in the hands of Nanny because Nanny was a school teacher. She knew about all these things. Mm -hmm. and we put you in the hands of Nanny where you will be able to go to school, get to school on time. Get home safe and all. Me and finding. I, I'm sorry, Grammy. Um, it worked out good. It did. It worked out perfect because yeah. I remember trying to get to and from school was a mission for a long time, you know, like because I was living in South Miami Heights, but I went to school in Coral Gables. It was right. hard to find a bus that ran my route because I, I basically lived out the way. So you know, the bus stops that were assigned to kids who lived out the way was never near anyone's home. I remember, mm -hmm. you know, once I did move in with my great grandma who lived in Richmond Heights, we would go to the bus stop where there were five other kids who loaded the bus at that bus stop. And it was right. off a corner off of Colonial Drive. And, you know, I had two girls that lived in Peron, one girl that lived in South Miami Heights, but that was the farthest that our bus that was going back to Coconut Grove every day would go to pick us up. Right, and you know I would get up every morning and take you to the bus stop. To the bus stop, yes. I remember my entire childhood was going to the bus stop, getting picked yeah. up to and from the bus stop. That's why I got a cell phone at such a young age. Um, and at Sunset Elementary, my classes were predominantly Hispanic. Um, I remember elementary school, probably around the fourth or fifth grade is when I got my first Black friend. It was a girl. Her name was Brittany. Um, and we were friends all the way through middle school. We both went to Carver together. Um, she lived in Coconut Grove, so she no longer caught the bus, but I still had to catch the bus to school. Um, still had to wake up at the crack of dawn to get to the bus stop, sit at the bus stop. Um, 
if I miss that bus, I will be petrified to call my mother and let her know I missed that bus <laughs> because now I have to find a way to Coconut Grove. Trying to get to, through traffic on US one was the worst, the absolute worst. That traffic was was bumper the bump. But it was and it was standstill traffic. Like if you if I missed that bus, I wouldn't I wasn't gonna get to school until at least nine o'clock because yeah. how far I went to school. Um, middle school. Uh, Carver is a magnet program and it separates you based on language. So the first black teacher I ever had was a black Cuban and her name was Miss Sabudin and she taught me algebra. Um, other than that, all my teachers had always been white, white women or, you know, Hispanic women. But um, it wasn't until high school when I was no longer the only black girl in the class who was the representative for all black people um was in high school that was the first time I ever saw more than two black girls in the whole school and the first time I ever had a black teacher Miss A was my very first black teacher I ever had um Mr. Lee was the first black man I ever had and Miss Gilly was one of the longest black teachers I ever had but other than that you know high school was really when I was introduced to having black teachers other than that all my teachers were Hispanic mm -hmm. that's your well and that's all you know the sweet little Spanish. Yep. On <laughs> here, visit. Visit for about a month. You'll get tired of them. <laughs> so it is plenty of black cute. And let me tell you, they is just as lovable as they could be. <laughs> I don't oh, know what I was doing. Man. <laughs> Wake up and you see what time it is, and it's like, Lord, I gotta tell this lady I missed the bus. <laughs> I know I'm about to get chewed out the whole ride. <laughs> I was, I was, the albums was against me too. I was really against it, but it's nothing we could have did about it. But take it and go on about your business. That's it. It was great, but it was both ways. I was standing good. Bad. I mean, any kind of way you want to put it. But for they are, I tell you, I couldn't, I couldn't take it no more. Getting up, going, taking her to catch the bus. That's the only thing that bothered me. Every day I would ask about her transportation, transportation. Never did get it. Um, I, I don't know. Until she went to homestead. No, seriously. And my goodness, I got her from the house. All the way to Homestead every day. I don't know though. Like I, I genuinely, I'm not sure why changing my school was never, you know, an option. I'm just assuming because the program and the um, schooling I was receiving at Sunset, my parents didn't choose to pull me out of it. Um, no, it was the best for you. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's what I assume because my little sister, my baby sister, Chachi, um, she goes to Frank C. Martin and I feel like the schooling that she's receiving there is just as up to par as Sunset Elementary. You know, I don't see any difference. So I'm just, I guess because of what they saw, you know, from my education, they knew that it was best to just keep me there and to deal with the long commute than to switch it, schools. It really was. It was, fun. it was all for your goodness and our goodness too. And special with your education in uh, your lifestyle. We didn't have to be worried about you being kidnapped or nothing. There was always somebody on the road would look after you. And you know, that was something. So something that you don't know, my grandmother was a bus driver for Miami-Dade County Public Schools for how many years, Grammy? 32 years. Years. Like, I mean, she, everybody knew Miss Page. So when I got in school, my grandmother had just retired maybe like two years prior to me starting elementary school. So everybody knew her. So when I did start taking the bus, there was nine times out of 10, my bus driver knew Miss Page. And Miss, yeah. my bus driver had Miss Page's phone number. So, you know, that was really a ritual. You know, the first day of school, it was either my grandmother taking me to the bus stop or my mom taking me to the bus stop to meet my bus driver to say, hey, this is Miss Page's granddaughter. She's going to school all the way in, in Coral Gables. Once she gets on this bus, she's your responsibility. You know, mm -hmm. make sure she gets to and from. Give me one second. My dog just came. The people, some people would treat them so bad. Even in the schools, out of the schools, along the road and things.
But when they met me and all that, I just showed love to them. And all, we got along like two little pieces in a hug. And they were my children. Yes, I loved it. 32 years. I loved it. And guess what? I dealt with the disabled children. That was my heart. It was great. And right today, I want you to know over here for coming to visit me right now. Bring me Christmas gifts and everything else. I got one named Jessica Cruz. I said, I don't know what I'm going to do with her. But she is my heart strain. I didn't pick them up from the school. I picked them up from Cone of the Street and bang. Mm. But his seven neighborhoods, Perrine, Goose, Richmond Heights, picking them up on the side of the road from different places like that. They are there to you pick them up on account they would have a handicap problem mm. that they would not be left alone. But they were good to deal with. They were good for me to be with. Mm -hmm. Captain all. Gods of them. From different schools, from different neighborhoods. Yeah. And all they want you to do is just show them once that you care for them. They, you, you show them that you love them. You know, you don't have no problem out of them. But then if you sell home word to them, they're gonna give it right back to you. Mm -hmm. And that's gonna last for the rest of the year. I loved my kids. I loved all my students. They were bad and they were good. I could use them as they were good. Some of them did that a, a normal child, I'm gonna say a normal child, somebody who knows what's going on and who could explain to you the bad and explain to you the good. Mm -hmm. And half of those kids and things, I mean, there was a lot of kids and things. I just couldn't stand to see they living in their treatment. Their treatment was awful. And that's the only time you would really get over it is when you will speak up on, girl, I will speak up on, I have gotten in so many fights and things with the normal children and their parents and things about these kids because I figured they were kids that who couldn't help themselves. And they just were being taken advantage of. But let me tell you now, when they see that I'm in business, they back down. They back down and got better. And the kids that I had on my own. Mm -hmm. Ten. Ten. Uh-huh. All of them. The biggest majority of them I did. Mm. Yeah, the same house I'm in now. Because my oldest daughter was something like 17. When I moved here, she probably was like 16, 17. But I had the authority to raise the biggest majority of them here, right here in this house. Um, elementary school was fine. It was really middle school. I wouldn't say, I wouldn't consider it bullying. We were, we were fine, all different things that, yeah, from, from uh, I'm gonna say hate. I'm gonna, I'm gonna say hate. We always never like to say the word uh, hate because that's what create problems. You say, and the kids here, you say, hey, they say, well, I don't like, I, I hate. Her. It just is a word, but it would, it would, it would be, I don't know, it would be the older children. It would be the yeah. old. Yes, um, for sure. But elementary school wasn't much of a problem. I would say it was really middle school. Um, when basically everybody wants to, to really start identifying or choosing their identity. And that's when it was really put in my face that you are the black girl and you yeah. have the spokeswoman for the black girl. So, you know, that's when I had to really understand that 
there are not many black girls where these people come from, not many black people in their neighborhoods. They don't see, you know, Monday I come to school with box braids down to my butt, but by Friday, my natural hair is in a ponytail and they're trying to figure out where the rest of your hair went. And then I'll come yeah. back next Monday with box braids back to my behind. And now everybody's touching my hair asking, how was your hair growing this long? You know, uh -huh. um, that's really when I got to see, you know, the social setup and the actual like constructions being put in place in classrooms. Um, it wasn't really in class, it was out of class, but because I went to school with predominantly rich kids, I mean, when I say, I mean, these kids were loaded. You know, everyone, all their parents were coming in foreign cars, you know, they were bringing, they were introducing me to Gucci, Louis Vuitton, Chanel, these designers at middle school because they were coming to school with designer book bags, you know? So uh, them coming to school hungry or needing was never, ever a problem for them. You know, right. anything, I was the one that was needing. Yeah. And I wouldn't even say needing because I never needed, you know, my mother always made a way that I had all my supplies I needed, you know, brand new uniforms every year. But, you know, I had, you know, just regular school supplies. They were coming with spiral notebooks I had never seen before, mechanical pencils I had never seen before. You know, that was more of the things that I had to deal with growing up. There was the type of resistance I had. It wasn't, you know, more of behavioral problems because that wasn't something I dealt with. We didn't have fights in school. You know, the closest right. thing to a fight I ever saw was in high school. You know, that was the closest thing to a fight that we, I saw growing up. The only school that really used to have the fights and things was elementary. I don't know what happened to them, but they calmed down all of a sudden. But they used to be the main one that have fights and things every day. But it, it just was a change in them. That was in regular school. Well, I was saying from the time that I was driving buses, they, they just was all, uh, I would say they just had a mean streak about them. Mm. It was it was like they they not satisfied. They're not satisfied the way they travel. They're not satisfied to where they're going. It just it just was a problem, but then they caught themselves up. They caught themselves up. And got to the place where this girl go say, well, no, this is where I gotta go. I'm gonna accept it and don't say nothing else about it. Okay. Really bad, but you to catch hell out there with them kids. Boy, them kids who beat you, they used to beat us just like we were their babies. Hmm. But now the schools and things are all different. All these minutes. Only thing I hate now is they got too many schools around here. But then the population on the children and things done got so big. Mm -hmm. Some people coming in from different towns, coming in and just say, for instance, they have about five people coming in and they walk around, they ride around, they take a night, they spend a night. And it's oh well, you know, I like this place. I'm gonna make this my home and when you know anything need I moved in. They are here. And the population just grow. It just grow. Grow with plenty of children. I've always remembered Miami being packed, but I can't say I have physically like literally watched Miami grow the last, I'll say five years. Ever since I moved to Virginia, every time I come back, there's a new building on US-1. There's a new yeah. complex on US-1. Like I'm mm -hmm. literally watching Miami expand before my eyes, you know. Um, right. Like places on US-1 that used to be lots of just land and trees are now, you know, uh, apartment complexes. Building. Yes. I don't see that no more. You see a different setup. Everything, yeah, everything's new. Mm-hmm. And that's what happens. It just grows so much. Everybody get used to this place and go into it and tell their friend about what good time they got, what good time it is in this place and thing. You don't have to worry about this. And they come in to try it out. 
But I tell you, I, I'm really enjoying this. I sit back. I sit back and do nothing now. Just watch the younger children grow up. Uh -uh. I guess we call Parani, but my home sit down. What's your favorite part of Parani? 103rd Avenue, we all were born and raised. I knew up. it. <laughs> 103rd Avenue. Redway Grand Little House is still sitting. Boy, I wouldn't take nothing for if I was living there. Go back to Granny House? Go back to Granny House and I just look at it. I told Freddie the other day, why they won't let him put the porch back on the house? We loved that porch. We sat on that porch day after day with my mom and my sister Beulah Bay and Helen and we had Plenty of fun just eating sauce meat and crackers. Mm. <laughs> worth crackers. Mm -mm -mm. Love it. Me and Minnie B used to jump up in the morning time and make it down the granite in order to get the leftover food. That was the best food it was. The lima beans and things that were left over from night. That's because the seasoning got to sit in it. Yes, indeed. And it was good. It was good. We used to release for that. I love it. And we didn't have chairs. We used the wall. You were leaning against the wall? We used the wall. We always did. Lean against, lean the, against the wall. We, uh, what you call it? We used to call it the horses. You know how you take and build a wall with a wide sheet of paper, a new, a wide sheet of lumber. Mm -hmm. and get up there on it. Oh, that's that's yeah. I just love it because we used to just sit out there in the yard shoot marbles, go out in the street, play basketball, play baseball. We would make our own ball, get an old sock, load it up with grass, never be our ball. We didn't have to worry about too much. The people didn't think all the way would watch out for us. And then there were the many people in the neighborhood the only children was in there with us and Miss Lily made me there with Robert Lee, Johnny, and Buddy. There were three of them. And the couples, that was it. And the couples were the distance away from us. How many people lived on Granny Street, Grammy, when you were growing up? Let me see, Granny, Miss Emily Bradshaw and her family. Miss Mag. That's it. Yeah. Three people lived on 103rd Avenue? Yeah. Ain't no and way. They, they cheer, Miss, Miss Mag had one daughter. Miss Emily Bradshaw had three children. That was it. So what's across the street from Granny House, that church? What was that? Was that a house before? No, that was Ella Gray Church. Ella Gray didn't have no children. Her sister, Miss Ida, was living there, but she didn't have no children. They didn't have none of that church in that market. That was all. Thank you. Maybe a monkey all a gray hair? Yes. My daddy went over there and caught it. He went to about Ella Gray House. Ella Gray was sitting to the dining room table drinking some coffee. He went to Ella Gray High, pulled the back door for the went in, took the coffee and was drinking it. My daddy went and got him and put a chain around his neck. He was real friendly. Built him a little house right there in the snag backyard. She had a real monkey, Grandma? Yeah, that was a real monkey. I he was a real monkey. His name was Pete. <laughs> 
Yeah. They used to take him in can to work with him. How y'all get a monkey in Paran? We don't know. He just walked up from nowhere. <laughs> Ella, Ella Gray got him and Ella Gray kept him and she raised him. <laughs> he him up. But boy, he hated us children. He loved the grown people. But he hated us children. Mm-hmm. Because when she's saying that there are only three people living on 103rd now, there are three people directly next to my grandma, my great great grandmother's house now. Yeah, Miss Emily Brash of House was there now. Don't you see it ain't no house on the corner on the right hand side of Granny House? I haven't been to Granny House in almost two years. Ain't no uh ain't no house next to Granny House. That you and me used to be up there next to your granny. But her house got burned down. They never built it back. My granny house. Um, because her, so my grand, this house sits uh, probably on like half an acre. But it's this little bitty house on all this land. So mm-hmm. that's, that was it just our. Be, it used to be great. Uh, there, but they don't build up around it so much. It used to, so, and that's the thing. This house still sits on all this land with this huge yard. So yeah. that's a meeting place for our family. You know, her her house is big enough. That yard is big enough to house everybody. Yeah, you know? that's why we have all the family reunions and everything. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, so that's why it's my favorite place because that's where I know all of our family reunions being. That's where I would see the huge charter bus pull up and unload my family from Louisiana. And they will all fit in this yard because the yard is humongous. Like, mm-hmm. the yard is huge. No, because everything looked the same. Everything looked the same to be right there in place. But yeah, uh, we would have we would have such a good time. We don't look like we'll miss from nothing. Well, we need was right there. Yeah, we needed a uh, basketball to play with. It was right there. We needed a tennis ball to play softball or anything. It was right there. I mean, we just had the opportunity to have some of anything that we want. It don't it don't bring it don't make you think about the hard times that you was having or the hard time you were living in. You don't think about any of that. You live in the life of the rich and famous, and you probably don't have anything, but just the way you feel. We just had it made good. That's to the train. The train wasn't running for people. It was more like on a working experience. Okay. There was a, she said it was a train that was uh, a railroad track that ran through Peron. It did, yeah. It's still there. If I'm not mistaken, it's still there. No. Everything looked like it all remained the same. Okay. Let me see these railroad tracks. I'm thinking. No, I was I was said no because pretty much well everything a town would have it. How you gonna answer for me, Grammy? <laughs> that was my question. I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm just picking. Um, I think growing up in Miami, I wish I had more res- more educational resources. Um, you know, going to a magnet school but not living and having access to those magnet, um, you know, amenities like tutors (laughs) or tutoring centers. That was not something that was common. You know, the closest thing I had was the library that was in Richmond Heights, you know, next to Jackson South. Every now and then there was a lady who was a teacher. She may have been there um, or there was a tutor that might be in there every now and then. But other than that, you know, I didn't really have any resources to tutor to, you know, any type of support educationally. It was like once I left school, you I better hope and pray I retained everything I learned that day because I really didn't have any much help. Even though I could have gotten a math tutor, it would have been obsolete going back to school Monday morning when the class isn't even in English. So, you know, I don't 
I wouldn't really say that it was specific because it, it, there was general classes. It was just in another freaking language. <laughs> Yeah. Bye bye. Nice meeting you, Mrs. Cage. Yes, you too. I love you. Oh, I love <laughs> you too. Thank you. Okay. I love you, Grammy. I gotta go. All right. Love you, babe. Have a good day. Bye. Bye bye. Do something with your telephone call that people didn't shut off. No, that's my yeah. mama telephone. You go give it to her. <laughs> oh, well, Dad, I keep the chair from, but uh, I'm on your phone. <laughs> I'm on your phone. <laughs> They going in the house with your mama. Okay, Grammy, I love you. All right, I got to get up. I love you, too. That All mama right, be care. Don't get up by yourself. Be careful. Yeah, I'm in, I'm in the bed bag here. Okay. The one will put you down, put you up. Okay. All right. All righty, Grammy, bye-bye. Love you. Love you, too. <laughs> you like